I wanted to talk about attachment styles. Three in particular, the anxious insecure, the secure, and the anxious avoidant, and how that relates to some relationships and how that can manifest in relationships. My house is dark because it's literally nine o'clock at night. That's my bedtime. Um, so you're just gonna sit here and chill with me for a minute or two. If you're in a relationship and you're going through some crap right now, ask yourself and your partner, what's our attachment styles individual as individuals? Figure it out, right? Do a quiz online and figure out what your attachment style is. You'll be surprised. Sometimes things will come up and you're like, whoa, I had no idea. That makes so much sense. Again, I have I have two really awesome parents and they they work their ass off and they were really great. Um, but there's some stuff that you get traumatized with. And I have two children and I'm like, shit, how am I going to like, hopefully I don't traumatize my kids. Um, I'll do the best I can, right? You do what you can. And that's how it was back then in the eighties. I was born in 1984. You do the math. I'm almost 40. And so, you know, like we didn't have the same stuff back then that we have now. So maybe there wasn't enough information out there for our parents to learn the stuff, right? Like you got to let it go and move forward. Anyways, so that's one side of it. And what happens with a child that feels unsafe in an environment is a lot of different things. And one thing is they become very highly empathic. They have to make sure that the room is safe before they go in. They can develop issues like social anxiety when they're older. Maybe they always say to themselves, I hate humans. I hate people. I hate being crowds. Usually that's a sign of a toxic empath, someone who has traumatic childhood shit going on that they need to heal, the inner child, right? On the other side of that, there's the, the avoidant Maybe their parents were similar to yours, but they also just, maybe there was a child, maybe it was a child of divorce. Maybe the parent left. Maybe there was an abandonment that happened there. That child will feel extreme abandonment. And when they grow up, they become very fight or flight. They're in like a fight or flight survival mode and they have to take care of themselves. They, they feel like they've been put in a role as a provide a care a caretaker for themselves um where they you know they tend to keep people at arm's length because people will depend on them and people will look up to them and they take on that role very seriously and they sometimes will or can develop narcissistic tendencies where they try to manipulate and they have a very high tendency to manipulate people unintentionally but it happens maybe intentionally depending on the person but Sometimes it can happen, you know, where they in, unintentionally will say, will give them the benefit of the doubt that they try to do this because of the fact, if you think about it, they were abandoned. Their fear, inner child fear is being abandoned, being unloved, being left behind, right? So what they do is they try to control, they try to manipulate and, and take charge of that person that they love so that they don't lose that person. And it's not a terrible thing. It's just something that in a relationship that can be like, holy crap, like, why are you controlling me? And the other partner could be like, yo, if the person is secure on the other side of that, they'll be like, mm -mm, I don't deserve that. You need to leave, right? If the person is an, an anxious, insecure person that we just spoke about, they will have a fawning response. They will chase why don't you love me? What did I do? What did you do? What didn't you do? I don't know that concept. They will chase, they will chase, they will chase, they will chase and eventually get exhausted. And then maybe they'll feel unworthy. Maybe they won't feel like that person loves them, but they still love them. You know what I mean? Like it just messes with you. So if you're with someone or you're in a relationship that sounds similar to that, there's hope is not lost. If you feel like you can communicate with that partner and you can kind of figure that out your, together, what your attachment style is and work towards finding security in your marriage, your relationship. And, and as individuals, if you are the one I was just talking about, the anxious, insecure, uh, in the relationship, 
then what I would recommend doing, because a lot of the signs of that would be that maybe you um, are afraid that your partner will leave you. Even though that person didn't have the abandonment issue, they're afraid of not being loved. They're afraid of not being seen, not being heard, right? They feel like they're not valued. And so they fawn on like a little baby deer, like, oh, please love me, that, that concept. And they'll chase after the other person, which is not healthy. You shouldn't have to chase people. You should just feel love and know that that person loves you back. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but sometimes we have to work at these things and understand ourselves enough to know what's going on behind the curtain, right? Anyways, so yeah, if you have an anxious and secure attachment, then I recommend finding security in yourself. The middle of that is secure attachment style. How do you become an attached, sorry, um, a secure person? By realizing your value, first of all, realizing your potential, realizing that all those things that you needed as a child is what you have in you now. You could reparent yourself. That's something that you do in inner child healing. You heal that trauma, that wounded soul, right? You heal that and you, you treat yourself as if you go back into those memories. Think about all the things that you went through, go back into those feelings, bring, you know, elicit that emotion and heal it. Talk to yourself right now as an adult to that inner child that's in there and and help yourself heal and give yourself the confidence and security that you need in order to bring that to the relationship because you cannot look to your partner for security because what happens with that is you become codependent and then you feel like you've lost your power and you completely become disempowered and then you'll feel worse and then I'll make things worse and it'll ruin the, it could ruin the relationship. And on the other note, when the avoidant partner pushes the other one away to the point where they start to control everything and become that narcissistic, they have those narcissistic, narcissistic tendencies we talked about. And again, not intentionally, and it may not be malicious. It could just be that they are afraid of losing that person. So they control it. They control the situation and the person in order to not have the abandonment happen all over. They need to go back and heal that inner child. They need to go back and reparent that inner child and make sure that that person feels like they're worthy of love and that they deserve it and that no one's going to leave them. And they, and they are, you know, like worthy of being in that relationship. Being in a marriage for a long time or any relationship is a lot of work. And it's not just work where you're like, oh, we fight all the time and we're like working at each other. No, you need to do your work, your, your work, not the other. You don't want to heal the other person. That's their journey. And that's the thing you have to realize too, in a relationship, in a marriage, it is not your responsibility to heal your partner. You will through your journey together but it's not your responsibility. It's not your duty to heal them. You can guide them. You can together come to these conclusions and help each other in that, in that way, but it's not your job. Your job is to love them and that's it and support them. And when they are going through their stuff, just be there and listen and try to meet them in the middle, in the secure zone, right? Maybe they need to know that you're not going to leave them. And no matter what happens, that you will be there to support them. Again, this is talk. I'm speaking about uh, relationships, obviously, that are not abusive. If the person's hurting you, like, yo, you deserve more. But we're not talking about that at all. Any kind of abuse is not appropriate. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about emotional distress in relationships that, you know, like financial things, uh, trust issues, respect, value, you don't value me, all these little things that are big, but things that aren't related to physical types of abuse and you know what I mean, right? So um, those are the things that can be healed if you're patient. So if you're in a relationship where you are in love with that person, give it time, be patient with each other, do the research for yourself, stop trying to find 
um, remedies from your partner. Do your work and then bring that to the table. And hopefully, if they love you, they will do their work and they will bring that to the table and you guys will meet and in the middle and be secure together. And uh, yeah, good luck.